Hey there, Night Nation. Thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of Saturday Sleepers. My name is Miles, otherwise known as underscore all night underscore on Twitter. Uh, and I work with sonsofucf.com to put out picks each week on Big 12, Top 25, and UCF. And this week, I'm going to bring you an extra pick that I like to call a sleeper pick. Something a little off the radar. Something you might not be thinking of yet, but I think might be the best bet of the weekend. We're going to dive right in real quick to a recap of my official picks for this weekend. Uh, we're going to call this a little two-minute offense. So I'm going to breeze through these uh, so that we can get on to the, the real important best bet of the week and my Saturday sleeper. So... We're going to start with Kansas State. They're favored currently by 10.5, and, and I'm going to go ahead and lay those points. Kansas State's offense is ranked 15th in the country uh, at 482 yards per game. Uh, DJ Giddens uh, had absolutely tore UCF up. He's been doing well uh, throughout the rest of the season as well. He averages 6.4 yards each carry, so he's getting it done on the ground. Uh, Oklahoma State's defense is under mediocre, subpar. Uh, they're 74th in the country as far as yardage goes, allowing 370 yards per game. Uh, and Oklahoma State's offense looks inept at times. So give me Kansas State minus 10 and a half. The next game we have is number 12 Oklahoma versus number three Texas in the Red River shootout, showdown, rivalry, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, if, if you're a college football uh, nerd like me, it's always been the shootout. So that's what it's gonna be today. Uh, because of that, I'm gonna take the total over 60. I get it. Texas has one of the best defensive lines in the country, and Oklahoma's offense looks to be improved. Uh, but let's dive into some of the numbers real quick. Dylan Gabriel uh, has 15 touchdowns and two interceptions on the year, and one of the best completion percentages in the country at 75.2%. That's good for number five. Uh, Quinn Ewers has looked good as well, but really they get a, Texas gets it done on the ground first. Uh, Jonathan Brooks is the number three running back in the entire country. Uh, as far as rushing yards, and he's number 12 with yards per carry. So total points average in their last six meetings, 78.3. The over-under set at 60, give me the over. My third pick of the weekend is easily the worst feeling pick that I have, uh, and it's one of those just gut picks that I go with. It's going to be Maryland plus 17 and a half at number four, Ohio State. All signs point to Ohio State. Why I decide to go with my gut, who knows? But we're going to see what happens. Maryland is 0-8 against Ohio State straight up since joining the Big Ten in 2014. And they're 3-13 against the spread as road underdogs under Mike Loxley. Nothing looks good for this game, and nothing looks good for me. But I have a feeling. Maryland is on a seven-game winning streak. And during that streak, they're 5-2 and against the spread. I feel like they hang around. I feel like they give Ohio State a little scare. And who knows, 17 and a half is a lot. Go ahead and give me 17 in the hook. Like I said, a lot of places you can get it for plus 20 right now. My next pick is going to be number 11, Alabama, minus two and a half at Texas A&M. The Aggies have the best sack rate in the country at 14.8%. And the Alabama O-line has been suspect at times. I think Texas A&M, they've definitely shown that they can be taken advantage of through the air. Their secondary can be shaky. Miami did this in week two. Miami um, exploited this by you know, putting up 17.8 yards per completion, and that was on 21 uh, receptions. So if Jalen Milrow can use his, his athleticism and avoid the pass rush and find his wide receivers downfield, I think Alabama can cover the two and a half. And this will be probably the saddest pick that I make all year, and it might make some of you upset with me, but we're not here to make picks to stroke our egos. We're here to make picks to make money. So this is going to be UCF at Kansas, and I got this one early, Kansas minus three. It has since moved all the way over to favoring UCF by two points, um, and I still feel good about it. I don't like saying that, but it is what it is. Uh, there are questions about JRP's return. Is he going to be starting? Will he be available to play? Uh, and it, it's funny because a lot of Night Nation was not happy with his performance most of his career and are now hoping and praying that he can make a return. Um, I, if, I believe he will return. I have no inside information on this. It's just how I feel. I think he's coming back, but I don't think he's going to be 100%. It's going to be a lot like last season where he comes back and plays banged up. Kansas will likely start their backup, uh, Jason Bean, in, in place of Jalen Daniels. And I feel like that's a lot of the reason why this line has swung. 
but I don't feel good about that either. Jason uh, Bean has a lot of experience. In his last seven games with at least 20 attempts uh, since you know the middle of last season in 2022, these are his stats. 114 of 178. That's good for 64% completion. That's a decent quarterback. 235 yards passing and 41 yards rushing per game. He's had 17 touchdowns and four interceptions in those seven games with 20 uh, pass attempts or more. I feel like after this weekend, the Knights may still be looking for their first Big 12 win, uh, Big 12 conference win, and I feel like Kansas is going to take this game by more than three. And now that I've lost probably half of you on my last UCF pick, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the Saturday sleeper. This is what I feel like is the best value for the weekend. This is going to be the best pick, and it will uh, I will be adding this to my card this weekend. It's going to be Colorado State at Utah State. Colorado State started their season with two tough losses to Washington State and Colorado. Washington State right now is number 13 in the country at 4-0, and and I, I get it, Colorado with the Dion hype and all. They've come out and surprised as well. They've already met their over-under for um, game wins this season, and they're looking to surpass that this weekend. We're not even halfway through the season yet, and they're surpassing their game total. So there is no shame in those first two losses. Since then, Colorado State's gotten back on track. Their biggest concern this season was their offensive line. Last season, their offensive line was last in the country as, uh, as far as sacks allowed per game. So far through this part of the season, they're 23rd in sacks allowed. Last year, through their uh, non-conference schedule, they allowed 25 sacks. This year, they've only allowed five, and three of those have come from their quarterback running out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. They shine with their receiving room. Uh, their receivers are, you know, they're... They're, they're stout. Top to bottom, they've got five receivers with at least 15 receptions, and they've got one receiver with 45 already. They average 12.7 yards per reception as a, as a team, uh, and they are the number three passing offense in all of college football at 383.5 yards per game. The most interesting stat I found was they, that they generate 234 of those passing yards after the catch. That is their average per game after the catch. And they just had a game last week where they had more than 250 yards after catch. Their, uh, their receiving room is talented, they're experienced, and I think they're gonna be able to take care or uh, take advantage of Utah State rather. Utah State's defense, bad, 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 bad. Uh, Utah State's defense is 130th in success rate. Success rate is calculated as uh, basically percentage of yards needed per down. So on first down, Gain 50% of the yards, that's considered a success. Gain 70% of the needed yards left on second down, that's considered a success. And gain 100% of the needed yards on third or fourth down is also considered a win when it comes to success rate. Utah State is 130th in success rate allowed. I'm taking Colorado State minus three. Lock it in, hammer down, take it. Uh, this might be the best bet of the weekend. This game's going to be played Saturday night at 8 p.m. Uh, and like I said, take the Colorado State Rams minus three. Thank you again for watching this week's edition of Saturday Sleepers. Uh, follow me on X or Twitter at underscore all night underscore. And then also go follow the Sons of UCF wherever you can get podcasts. You can follow Sons of UCF on Instagram, Twitter, uh, even uh, YouTube for sure. We've got so much content coming out on YouTube. Check out sonsofucf.com where you'll find all of my official picks and my analysis for those picks. Uh, and go Knights, charge on.